Welcome back guys to another episode of Corolla Customs and today I'm going to be teaching you something. Today I'm going to talk about the basic tools that I believe you need to start working on your car. So stay tuned. Alright guys, so the first thing on this list is a pry bar. Now, they come in different sizes. This one is a large. They come in medium, small, as well as a mini, I think. And these things work amazing. Anytime you find yourself trying to get a part out and there's a spot where you can pry, instead of using a small screwdriver, you can pop one of these pry bars in, give it a gentle pull, and out she will come. So, I definitely recommend getting one of these. The next thing on our list are ratchets. They make so many of these standard head, flex heads, low profile heads. Uh, these particular ones come from Harbor Freight. I love these things. These are the professional series. They are low profile with flex heads. Uh, this particular one is a 3 8 and this one is a quarter inch. I definitely have the half inch sitting around there, but that's a snap on brand. Um, I do love these things. They get into the spots when I need them. The head also flexes and helps me get into those tight spaces. The next thing on the list to complete the ratchets would be sockets or socket sets. This particular one is a snap-on socket set. No different from the Harbor Freight really. It's just a brand name that people are paying for. A lot of people will disagree with me. People might say snap-on, snap-on, snap-on. I don't care if it's Harbor Freight or snap-on. As long as it does the job that I need it to do, I'm okay with it. Plus, as long as it has lifetime warranty, I'm definitely okay with that. This one, this particular socket set that I'm holding in my hand comes from a range of 8mm to 19mm. This is the metric set. They also sell SAE, which I have a few of them sitting in my drawer, and so on and so forth. They also have shallow and deep sockets as well. There's so many available that you can get and I will definitely leave links in the description below for you. So the fourth thing we have on our list are wrenches. They come in two different styles. Uh, regular and ratcheting wrenches. I love my ratcheting wrenches. They help me out in a tight spot. I don't ever have to remove the wrench, put it on, turn, remove the wrench, put it on, turn. All you just have to do is just ratchet your way. You want it to tighten, flip it around, ratchet the other way. These wrenches come in handy for breaking bolts. If something is stuck on there and it's hard to remove, you just put it on and you can give it a pull without having to worry about damaging the gear mechanism. Each has its own specialty and they come in handy. I recommend getting both. Uh, they come in metric and SAE as well as long and short and stubby sizes. So I'll leave links in the description below for those. The next thing on our list our pliers, they come in different sizes, different shapes, different everything. You have lockjaw pliers, you have regular pliers, you have cutters, you have strippers. You can get anything that you need. I particularly buy these in sets. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below for those as well. You can go to Harbor Freight. Those ones are, in my opinion, kind of cheapy. They do do the job, but sometimes you need a good quality locking jaw or plier to just hold and grip on what you need. Next thing on our list are breaker bars. So I use these things for many different things. This is a breaker bar, Harbor Freight Professional Series. I love this as well. Lifetime warranty, it gets me out of so many tight spots. Uh, trying to break lug nuts off of wheels. Bam, I got the leverage I need and it'll come off. Any kind of stud. Anything heavy duty. This one particular is a half inch. So this will help you get off those bigger bolts. Uh, if you're trying to do an engine removal and you have to drop the whole entire subframe, this will help you break the subframe. These things are amazing. Even if you need to, you can use a extra bar for a leverage, such as a pipe, which I use. It's not really recommended because if it breaks or you fall or you hurt yourself, that's a pretty good way of hurting yourself. But you just gotta have control and know what you're doing and just do everything safety and wear your safety glasses and whatnot. So just take your time. But these things are tremendous help and I recommend getting these and I will put the link in the description below. The next thing on our list are screwdrivers. They come in different sizes, lengths, as well as Phillips head or flat heads. These things are amazing. This particular brand is a Craftsman Professional and I use these all the time. 
from removing from removing screws or just holding something into place even trying to you know adjust the e-brake with the little adjuster wheel these things come in handy they come in many different sizes big medium small even stubby I suggest to get a whole set of them I will leave a link in the description below for you for that so you can definitely check that out if you want next thing on the list is jack stands and a jack here we have is a jack stand I suggest you get a good rating poundage one just to hold your car up these are definitely for safety uh, I have a jack stand over here to the side I'll bring that in view just now for you to see these things work amazing when you need to get under your car you jack it up you put the stand in place and you can easily 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 get underneath your car and do what you have to do for safety when I remove the wheels I like to put them underneath the car with me just so if the jack stand does happen to fail it'll fall on the tire and you have some time to get out of there before anything worse can happen so just remember be safe guys and just really use these things with respect before you start just throwing things up and jacking stuff up you gotta really take time so so that's one of the things that I'll recommend a jack and a jack stand make sure you get a good rated one and make sure you get one that can lift the weight of your car make sure you know the weight of your car and you have to know what you're doing you can't just use a, a 1,000 pound one and lift a car that's 3,000 pounds it wouldn't work like that and you're putting yourself at risk for injury so read the instructions and use them well all right next on our list are hammers so we have hammers here they come in many different sizes as well big medium large heavy there's so many different varieties there is there's rubber mallets there's brass there's all, all different kinds of varieties I can't think of them all the top of my head right now uh, but I'll definitely leave a link in the description below for you you need those especially if you're trying to get off rusted rotors that you can just knock knock the rust off if you're up here in the north and it'll come off with the hammers or if you need if you need a hammer if you have a bolt that's rusted on and you need the hammer to just hammer the the socket on and then you can get a better grip on it they come in handy too also we have a sledgehammer this comes in handy for rims that are rusted on I just give this one good whack BAM tire falls off and everything works good even the rotors the really difficult rotors that you can't get off with the regular hammers you just use this big sledge and give it a swing be careful you don't hit anything else such as the fenders on the car and you get yourself into more problems than is needed so I definitely recommend getting the sledge and the hammers I'll definitely leave a link in the description for you for that below now guys we come on this side of the chart everything I explained before here was the basic tools that I believe that you need but if you're willing to spend more money to make your life easier you know that you're an auto enthusiast you know that you like working on your cars and you want to have the job done a little bit faster so you're not there cranking away and doing what you have to do these are the tools that I'm gonna tell you that you should get uh, based on if you're willing to spend more money if not these are fine too do you do whatever helps you adjust to your life so the first thing I'm gonna talk about are impact sockets you can get a nice little impact socket set like this these things are amazing they go well with the next thing on the list which are impact guns such as this these help remove the lug nuts on the rims or anything else that you need crank bolts whatever that's there this will help with this you also need an air compressor which I have over there I'll show you in a moment you can get a good air compressor from Home Depot you can get one from Lowe's you can get one from from online you can get one from Harbor Freight they all work just get a good air compressor get some hose and plug in your air tools and you are revving to go also another thing that we have are air ratchets this falls in the air tool category these things make my life so much easier plug it in and you get any bolt out in and out make sure you get the threads in by hand and then you can pop in the air ratchet makes a little bit of noise but makes the job so much easier and faster they come in a variety of different sizes quarter inch three eighths and half inch just like the impact guns as well 
The next thing on the list are electric tools. If you don't feel like spending the money on air compressor, air guns, air tools, you can get the electric impact. These are battery operated. You can get them anywhere, Home Depot, Harbor Freight, wherever. I actually never really use the Harbor Freight electric stuff. I don't have good luck with them, but a lot of people seem to like them. I'm not really into it that much. So I try to stay away from them. I usually get more of Craftsman brand or a Snap-on brand, or even just something that I know, Ingersoll Rand, DeWalt, Makita, those things, you know. Uh, those, those brands, I believe, work very well. Um, so I'll definitely leave a link in the description for you for that. Those things get you out of a tight spot. Even if you're uh, needing to change a tire, they're powerful enough to pull off those lugs sometimes and even put them back on. So if you're stranded and you need to fix your spare tire on the side of the road, I definitely suggest using or carrying an electric impact with you. It'll, it'll help, you know, charge it up overnight and carry it whenever you're going on the road. It'll be a big help. And all right, guys, the last thing that's needed is a good quality scan tool. Here we go, this is an Autel brand. I'll leave the link in the description below for you. If you're trying to diagnose your codes, your engine light, your ABS light, your transmission light, this will help tremendously. You would not have to pay a mechanic a diagnostics fee to figure it out. You can just get the code, look online, look at the forums, and they'll help you out. People help you out, everything's on the internet. It's so much easier in this day and age. Now, that being said, you do not really have to get a scan tool. You can also go to AutoZone or places like Advanced Auto and they will scan the vehicle for free for engine codes. I'm not sure about the ABS codes and whatnot, but I know their readers read engine codes. With that code being said, it'll lead you into a right direction. Now, not every code that pops up will go for that part. Like, let's say, let's say you get a, a random misfire and it's a P0300. And one of the places that scanned your code said, hey, I would recommend changing the spark plugs. It could not be the spark plugs, guys. It could be a fuel injector that's clogged and it's missing. It can be a coil pack that's bad and it's just missing more than one coil pack if it's a P0300. It could be the spark plugs. It can be low compression. It can be anything. You really can't go by ear for what those places say it'll be if they're scanning it for free. From there on, you would have to look up that code and then do all the diagnostics needed as you would find online. So really do your research. And if you're not comfortable with that, definitely go to a mechanic or a professional who can further diagnose the vehicle for you and give you a proper answer. And if you don't want him to repair it, you, you can just tell him you'll try it on your own. Just let him give you the diagnostics and, and give it a shot, guys. I will leave a link in the description below for everything here that I spoke about and that way you guys can enjoy it. You guys can, you know, see what you can afford, see what you want to go for and, and try. I always like to let people know that it's cool to work on your car. Just do it. It's okay to work with your hands. There's nothing wrong with it. Get started. Learn something. Learn what you're driving, you know, get, get into the machinery. It, make a bond between the man and the machine. Get involved in what you're driving, know what you're driving. That way you can feel safe that you're, that way you can feel comfortable knowing that you're safe on the road with your vehicle. If you break something, hey, it's okay, it's a learning experience. That's what it's all about. If you break it, just fix it and don't make that mistake the next time. And if you really can't figure it out after you broke it, then call someone else who has more experience or tow it to the shop. At least you tried. And hey, you might even learn something or search YouTube. There's so many videos on YouTube. Or you can ask me and leave a comment in the description below and I will definitely help you out. I will try my hardest to help you out and I'll even make a video trying to help you out if you really cannot figure it out. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I really tried to make this as informative as I can. If there's anything else that I've left out that you believe is worth it, let me know and I will tell you. But if you believe it's worth it, then it's what you believe. So you get what you want. So thank you all for watching. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification on top to stay up to date with all my latest videos. As well as for my returning subscribers, thank you all for giving me the support on this channel. All 1600 of you, I appreciate it. And thank you for helping me reach that thousand subscriber mark like I've been asking for. 
Let's try to get up to 10,000 subscribers this year. I'm hoping that we can get there. Also, visit my website, CorollaCustoms.com. I'll leave the card in the top here, so you can just click on it. I am selling t-shirts for the Chevy Avalanche guys, or whoever likes and feels like those shirts are cool, live life off-road. So guys, I hope you guys do purchase some of the t-shirts. All the proceeds do go to St. Jude's Hospital, which is near and dear to me. These, This hospital helps out every child in need. They do not ask for a cent from the families. They provide all the food, all the healthcare, and everything that's needed for these kids. And uh, I believe it's an awesome thing to do. So if you guys can and spare the, you know, the $15 that it costs for the t-shirts, just go onto the website, pay for it, and I'll send you your shirt. The money that you give me will go over to St. Jude's. Anything that we can do to help these kids to have a future later on in life. So I appreciate it, guys. Hope you stick with me for another episode. Peace.